Hey everybody, chemical reactions. This is a quick little tutorial to get you up to speed on how to read and write a chemical reaction. It's really quite simple because it's pretty much like math. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right. Okay, so for example, let's take a very simple mathematical equation. Two plus three equals what? That's right, it is five. This is very similar to a chemical reaction. So let's write the chemical reaction version of that right underneath, and we'll do it in blue, okay? So let's say we have something like A plus B yields C. Okay, so this is very much this, uh, a similar way that you write it. I'm going to label what these things are, all right, and then we'll give you uh, some specific examples. On the left side, always on the left, okay, these are what we call the reactants. And that should be, um, that should make sense because you, it's what is reacting, what's happening is happening on the left. And since we in our society read from left to right, we put the reactants on the left very much like we do mathematics. So what, it's kind of like 2 plus 3, those are the reactants. We're, we're reacting them together to get something, all right? So in chemistry, it's the same thing. You can have more than two reactants, or you can just have one reactant, depending on the type of chemical reaction. But the point is, whatever is on the left is what you call the reactant or reactants. Okay. Now, on the right-hand side okay, is what, and I'll bet you can guess what it's called, it's called the product. Okay. It's what you make, okay, or what is the result. Okay. And in the middle, uh, instead of an equal sign, you'll see, oftentimes, you'll see an arrow going in one direction, that is from the left to the right. And all that's saying is the reactants are going towards the right. You're, they're, they're reacting and producing something on the right. Now, sometimes the arrow will be a double-edged arrow or whatnot, but you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that right now. For our purposes, we really just kind of want to look at this basic format for what is a chemical reaction. So, reactants are always going to be on the left, okay? And products are always going to be on the right, okay? Uh, let's give you an example. Keep it purple here. Okay, so here is our example. If I have, oh gosh, what could we add together? Let's say, okay, so let's take this reaction here. I'm going to say zinc, that's a metal, okay, plus hydrochloric acid, okay, that's going to be the acid in liquid form, is going to yield zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas, okay? So in this case, and this is what happens, what you do is you put zinc in hydrochloric acid, you see a lot of bubbling and fizzing, you can actually hear it, and what's happening is there's going to be the production of zinc chloride, okay, which is going to be a solid kind of substance that will be distributed. It's an ionic substance distributed in the water. Um, and then the bubbles will be hydrogen gas, and you can watch this. So if you look here, we're going to see as before, say these are the reactants. Okay, I go to the stock room and I get some hydrochloric acid and some zinc metal. They're sitting there, and I'm going to react them together. Okay, they are going towards the right-hand side because these, of course, on the other side are the products, which is zinc chloride, okay, and hydrogen gas. And notice, if I take a look here, it looks like um, zinc wanted to get together with chlorine for some reason and kick out hydrogen. Okay, and so hydrogen was kind of like kicked out of the whole mess. And so there was a, some kind of rearrangement. And so um, that's what oftentimes happens in a chemical reaction. Okay, and remember, going to the video, there are five types of reactions. Okay, 
And that's a, there's, a, there's a couple of great little videos on the website about that. But there are five types of chemical reactions depending on how it goes. Sometimes you add two things together to get one thing. Sometimes you start off with one thing and it breaks apart into two or more things. And it depends on what kind of things happen. But this video is just saying what is a chemical reaction and what does it look like. Now, there is a problem with what I've done up here in this particular reaction on this page, and that is, if you notice, um, things don't add up. I don't know if anyone noticed that, but for example, look, I've got one zinc on the left here, and I've got one zinc on the right here, so that's all great, but look, I've only got one chlorine on the left, and I've got two on the right, and I've only got one hydrogen on the left, and I've got two on the right. So things do not add up. Okay, so this particular equation here, even though it is a representation of a reaction, this is not balanced, which simply means that the, the atoms on the left are not equal to the atoms on the right. And so that's actually we wouldn't be done here, we'd have to balance the chemical equation, but in terms of just showing you what a chemical equation is, this is pretty good for right now. We'll worry about balancing in another video. One more example. Okay, this is one where, we'll call this one one of the five types of reactions, this one's called decomposition. And you'll see that in the video. And basically, decomposition simply means you start off with one thing as a reactant, and it breaks apart into more than one thing. So I'm going to start with calcium, CO3, calcium carbonate. It's going to decompose into calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. Okay? And so what you have here is you have, in this case, you have one reactant, and we still call it a reactant even though it's breaking apart, and you've got two products. So the way to know this is a decomposition reaction, basically what happened is calcium carbonate just broke apart into two different things. And you see there's a rearrangement. The oxygens kind of join up here and there. And it looks like one oxygen went over to calcium. Um, this is a decomposition because you start off with one and you end up with more than one. Okay. Now the interesting thing about this particular reaction, if you notice, is check and see, is this equation balanced? Are the atoms on the left equal to the atoms on the right? Well, um, let's take a look. How many oxygens on the left? There are three of them. Okay. How many oxygens on the right? Well, there are two here, and there's one here, so there's three. So it looks like the oxygens work out okay. How about the calciums? So there's one calcium over here. Oh my gosh, look, there's one calcium over here. So it looks like they work out pretty well too. And the only other atom that I have to worry about now is um, carbon. And it looks like there's one carbon sitting here, and oh my gosh, there's one carbon over here. So actually, this particular reaction, you don't have to mess with it at all because it's already balanced, okay? But the point is, this is a decomposition reaction, and what do you need to get out of this little mini lecture is reactants are always on the left. You can have one or more than one reactants. You usually have an arrow pointing, okay, to the right because you're going from whatever's on the left to the right, Okay, just so you know, in later chemistry classes, that will change a little bit, for, but for our purposes, that's what we're going to use. And then products are always on the right, and you can have one product, you can have two products, you can have three products. Um, usually, we're not going to go beyond that, um, but the products are on the right, and this is how you write a chemical equation.